Here we go. It's time for another Peacock and Williamson mailbag. We've got running back holdouts. Uh, we've got a, a wide receiver trade, Denzel Mims from the New York Jets. And what about that track record for Jets GM Joe Douglas and some quarterbacks that might be a little shaky heading into the 2023 season? All from the mailbag on today's Peacock and Williamson. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look into the NFL on the field and in the front office. With elite breakdowns, next level analysis, and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show, Brian Peacock and Matt Williamson. Thanks everybody for making us your first listen here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Most of the questions today come from uh, Twitter, threads, accounts. It is a mailbag. It is your show at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. You can also drop a question in the YouTube comments and make sure you are subscribed up on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcast. And by the way, speaking of YouTube, Matt, uh, we usually like to go live for our mailbag. We had a different timing today, so we're not live, but uh, you guys should be hitting that notification bell on YouTube as well as being subscribed. So you know when we do go live, you can jump in uh, with the live chat as part of our future mailbags, usually going live around uh, noon Eastern on Thursdays here throughout the off season. Let's start, Matt, with right. the running back story in the NFL. And have you heard about this part of the running back story, which I didn't know about until recently? Uh, apparently, uh, you know, McCaffrey and uh, Josh Jacobs and Saquon Barkley and all these guys are kind of there's there's like a, a, a star running back text thread amongst them. OK, that's pretty cool. To each other. And they've kind of come up with this whole thing themselves this offseason. And they've all been a lot more vocal about it in interviews on social media. And they've tried to get a groundswell of public uh, of public discourse, basically, that rallies around the running backs because everyone loves running backs. And and they're trying to get the people to get the teams to pay them more, essentially, they, because uh, they're obviously having a problem getting the deals that they want. And the league is moving away from running backs. And we've talked a lot about that already. And we do have a question here from Sir Madramissimo. He says, do you think the current running back salary situation will make less talented football players in high school, college um, seek to play a different position, create dynamic of lower number of talented elite running backs in a few years? What do you think? A lot there to unpack. Yeah. I, I didn't know about the running back text thread. And hey, tight ends have National Tight End Day, and don't they all get together once yeah. a year or two and party tight it up? University, with yeah. Where's Kittle the running back Kelsey. university? Right, right. They, they don't need a running back university because they all come into the league so good at what they do. <laughs> good point. And I wonder, like, how good do you have to be on that text thread? Like, is Alexander Madison on that tax text thread? I mean, mm. I'm sure Dalvin is, but I yeah, mean, oh, you know. yeah, you see. Yeah, only one of them currently getting paid. It's like so far the exactly. text thread hasn't worked. We'll see if it ends up working because they're still all working for that. Uh, that look, and, and when it comes to running back, and I get it. So that that's what's that's what sucks about the whole thing is is people think I hate running backs because I've been you know it's sure, not the running backs don't matter. I just you know the the value you shouldn't be drafting them in the first round and um and it's 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 not the fault of the running backs themselves. They're talented guys. They're super fun to watch. They're you know. They're the best players on their youth football teams. And, you know, mm -hmm. the best, most athletic guy, you put him at running back. You know, they're the most fun to players to watch in college football. And usually you can build a college football program around a, a talented running back. But you just can't in the NFL. And, and the, the two biggest reasons are attrition. They get hurt too often. Yep. You can't sink resources into that. The passing game is more valuable than the running game. And it's more valuable because it's easy to find a replacement level running back who's really good. Think about your favorite football team and how good that last running back is on the roster. It's probably going to be the star in your team's favorite training camp is that undrafted rookie, that seventh round rookie running back. Everyone's like, hey, this guy's really good because the, the replacement level at running back is as high as any position in the NFL. And the likelihood that the starter gets hurt at that position is the highest at any position in the NFL. That's why running backs value has fallen. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about this to fair, fair amount. I mean, we probably have all met somebody or know several people that, or met several people or know someone 
that looks at least like an NFL running back. That doesn't mean you could throw him on the Bears and he would you know run for 100 yards. But their body types and skill sets are just more prevalent in the human race than offensive tackles are in other positions. I mean, that's just a fact. So therefore, there's more supply than demand. I mean, as with everything, it comes down to supply and demand. Now, how could running backs create more of a demand? One thing I could say is, okay, if we're going to get all these cover two shells and things like that, might we be just seeing the beginning of the spike of the McCaffrey Eckler receiver types, you know, like the wide back we we've got one Samuel that went the other way. And what's funny is Debo Samuel's new contract is worth almost twice as much as what Christian McCaffrey's contract is worth. And they do the same thing. And actually McCaffrey does more because he gets the ball more often, but he gets the ball more more often in here's what's crazy about it. This is nuts. I can't believe I'm saying it, but it's the absolute truth. Christian McCaffrey is less valuable because he gets the ball more. Isn't that right. wild? Yeah, it is kind of wild, but you're not wrong. Because the the thing that's going to get him hurt and shorten his career is the running back stuff. That's the replaceable stuff. Mm-hmm. Gordon Mason, undrafted rookie running back last year, averaged six yards a carry in a Shanahan offense, right? How many times have we said that over the course of the last 25 years? Mm-hmm. You know, that's going to happen. Um, but his value is the other stuff the leadership how good he is in the passing game you know the the ability to do both things and you've got a guy in Debo Samuel and you got a guy in Christian McCaffrey uh there's not a very similar wide receiver to Debo in the league there's not a super similar to uh, running back to Christian McCaffrey in the league they're probably the most similar players in the league to each other and could probably 100% full-time flip and do the other guy's job but the guy who gets the ball less is worth more Right, And he should be worth more because it's more likely that he's good at age 33 than McCaffrey's good at age 33 because yeah. of the pounding he's going to take because of the less the less valuable thing he does is the thing he does the most, which is get squashed between uh, guys ranging from 230 to 300 pounds. Yeah, the, the Niners are really the best team to have that example with, I mean, without question, because, again, you're going to hear the terms positionless football, and it hurts McCaffrey that on his football card it says RB and not, you know, WR, you know, because they really could do both. So in order for the the running backs to get paid, the owners aren't going to care about this text thread or some fans think they should be worth more, yada, yada. That doesn't mean, ah, we'll just double your salaries running backs. I mean, they're not yeah. going <laughs> <They're gonna> to find <laughs> out how little ownership cares about fans' opinions about their football team. Uh, in a hurry. We, we, we've known that for a long time. But if 15 running backs can create, can tell – their front office, I do something that only 15 running backs on the planet can do. And my only angle on that is as receiving skills, maybe they'll be listened to. I mean, you brought it back to the Niners. I bring it back to Lev Bell. His, his argument whenever he set out that year was, and he wasn't wrong, much like McCaffrey was, I'm your best running back. I'm your best pass protector in the backfield. I'm your second best pass catcher behind Antonio Brown. But I can still get all that stuff for three quarters of what you're asking for, Lev. You know what I mean? Like there's still a a, a supply that I can go tap into, you know? So you're not wrong, Lev Bell or McCaffrey or whomever, but how do I show ownership or the people writing checks, owners, that there's not many of me out there? That's going to be a real challenge. It's going to be a challenge, uh, and uh, the the structure, salary structures have already changed, so you're not going to change what happened over the course of the last 10 years, which is mm-hmm. running back salaries didn't go up while everyone else's did. Um, you know, tight ends have the same argument that they're right as valuable as wide receivers, but they're not getting paid as much as wide receivers either, but they are getting paid more than running backs now. Uh, at least the top guys are. Um, you know, nobody's crying about kickers. They put money, they, they, put, uh, they put points on the scoreboard you know, right. you give up a lot of millions of dollars for a great kicker when the game is on the line in the playoffs and they're lining up for that field goal attempt. And um, so there, it's just you're going to be worth what you're going to be worth. I don't think there's a lot that's going to be able to be done about this. And even if you talk about the collective bargaining agreement, OK, you get rid of the franchise tag or something. But they're, they're talking about all these other things and all it's going to do is help everybody else out that gets paid more. And the running, it's just going to be the same percentage of the pie that the running backs are going to get, no matter what they do with the collective bargaining agreement. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm, every player hates the the franchise tag. And really, the franchise tag isn't doing what it was supposed to be doing in the first place. So getting rid no, of the franchise no. tag is probably the first thing that they'll try with uh, the players next time when they try to get a new CBA going. 
So another thing that really hurts the running backs, and you kind of mentioned this, is your big payday is after that rookie contract. But if rookie contracts were only two years, I think people might give you know a, a running back a big deal after two years, saying, mm-hmm. hey, I'll give you a three-year deal. That's your prime years. But by year four or five already being in the books, the best is already behind you at that position, you know, unlike other ones. So the timing doesn't work out well for them at all. Last thing I wanted to cover was the second part of that question, though. They asked, you know, will young running backs change positions? I was sitting there thinking, might they change sports? You know, but I also don't know what (laughs) sports. Yeah, right. I'd say maybe soccer, but there's not a lot of sports where five, ten, 205 pound guys are coveted. I mean, that's not a basketball. That's not hockey. That's maybe you'd be a baseball player instead, but I mean, that's not the ideal golf build. I mean, I I, tennis, you know, but I will say, and I mentioned this earlier in the week, one thing we did at Pitt all the time was if we had 25 scholarships to give out, we would often give out five or six to running backs of all shapes or sizes. Many of them turned into linebackers, kick returners, safeties maybe even a corner or a wide receiver they were just the best players in their you know area or state or whatever we just wanted to get them in the building i have another answer about that so a little bit more on running backs let's talk denzel mims trade and the team that joe douglas has built for the new york jets next Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Football host Vinny Iyer to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week, all season long. Whether you're prepping for a draft or scouting the waiver wire midseason, every week we're going to provide you players that are guaranteed fits on your roster. So with draft prep underway for the upcoming season, let's see who Vinny has picked out for us in this week's eBay's Guaranteed Fit fantasy picks of the week and we're going with that round one round two turn and Vinny thinks that basically the best thing that could happen to you is probably going running back running back and we went away from we went zero running backs for a while hey they're still valuable in fantasy football leagues so congratulations they're running backs by the way tomorrow uh, we're going to be doing some uh, uh, running back fantasy rankings but Jonathan Taylor and Nick Chubb are going to be up there and if you're looking for a smooth turn in fantasy football snake drafts with the last pick in the first round and the first pick of the second round couldn't do much better than a guaranteed fit like a one-two punch of Jonathan Taylor and Nick Chubb. Work horsepower in your backfield, taking uh, the Colts, Jonathan Taylor, and the Browns, Nick Chubb, back to back. Chubb is also set up uh, to dominate with more of the combined workload this upcoming season uh, in Cleveland. Yeah, a player I like a lot in Nick Chubb. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, just like your fantasy football team, and over 122 million parts and accessories for your recent vehicle, uh, for your vehicle uh, at your fingertips, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. Air filters, brakes, batteries, tail lights, uh, alternators, shocks, struts, you name it, eBay Motors has it, and they'll make sure it's the right fit for your car because eBay Guaranteed Fit helps you understand exactly what part you need for your vehicle the first time. So go forth, switch gears, crank the AC, and say goodbye to sweating if your ride needs a little fixing up because now you know you'll always be set up for success from the get-go with eBay Guaranteed Fit. Everything your vehicle is calling for is just a click away for the parts and accessories that fit your vehicle. Just look for the green check. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices at ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, exclusions apply. So, yeah, (laughs) it's a long conversation about running backs. The short Mm -hmm. conversation is, yeah, the value is going down um, and for good reason. And it's not because they're not talented. It's not because they're not their fault. They just do it for a short period of time. And there's a lot of good ones. There's more. uh, I I love the uh, what is it? The TJ Maxx. Is that what the the story? Yeah, right, right, right. right. What is the store? See how many six or five, ten dudes there are. It's how many six, five dudes there are. And and that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Walk around the mall. You know, I mean, how many offensive tackles do you see? I mean, how many Albert Hainsworths do you see here? DeForest Buckner's not very many. So Colt's question was was about, you know, and, and we see that a lot, like what we see at the lower levels and high school coaches have some 
gimmick of an offense that turns into a college coach that becomes maybe not so much of a gimmick. It becomes a staple in college. And then it becomes something that you start seeing in the NFL. And I think we're going to start seeing a lot more positionless football uh, everywhere. And we're seeing it in the NFL and guys that can do a lot of things and guys that are shaped a little bit different. So maybe the running back quote unquote position, the RB, maybe that does change. And there is more Mm -hmm. wide backs and more, Uh, young players playing wide receiver because there's more passing happening uh, early in, in, uh, in these, uh, Oh, sorry. This was Sir Madremissimo's question. Not, uh, not Colt. Colt is coming up next year, but yeah. um, yeah. (laughs) So yeah, maybe there's fewer elite running backs because kids don't want to play running back and they want to play wide receiver. And maybe that means there's less elite running backs. That is a potential that could happen, but I don't think it's going to be enough to, to sway things. But what I think is what about Christian McCaffrey? When he's up for his next contract, he says flat out, right. hey, guess what, teams? I'm not playing running back anymore. I am a wide receiver now. So pay me what you think I should be at a wide receiver. I'm going to play wide receiver, and I'm going to play a lot longer, and I'm going to get another contract. Even if I made the same amount, I'm not going to put my body on the line as a running back. I am now – I think of me as Wes Welker. I'm not Christian McCaffrey anymore. I think that could possibly happen. And I would right. only applaud Christian McCaffrey if he went that route. Yeah, it's interesting because to even expand on that further, I'm sitting here thinking, like, what's the future? And none of us know, of course. But if Derrick Henry could have it all back, would he try to be Vaughn Miller as opposed to Walter Payton? You know what I mean? Because he could maybe pull it off with his body type. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's, it's which position do you play? Because Chris, McCa- I mean, uh, Chris McCaffrey could go play wide receiver. Derrick Henry's not going to go play wide receiver. <laughs> no, right, right. Guys like him are a little stuck, you know. But I wonder, might teams decide – especially because now quarterbacks are running so much. If Justin Fields is going to run 10 to 12 times a game and I have Percy Harvin and Debo Samuel and Christian McCaffrey types, I give them each six carries a game. You know, are the days of 20 plus carry backs maybe going to dwindle between these Debo Harvin types and quarterback runs and maybe my backup quarterback is a fourth round pick that's a great runner too and he comes in and just takes some beating you know oh that we just spread it out i mean we can maybe do the whole podcast on this we got to get right right, right. but i think we're going to start to see some running quarterbacks get hurt and i think there's going to be some teams that second guess whether we should be doing that as well at the nfl level because they're going to sink all this money and time into a quarterback and they're going to get hurt and because hit players are hurt players and it goes back to the running back thing. And so we'll, I, I'm keeping an eye on that with this, uh, you know, new era of, of so many qu- quarterbacks who can run the ball. Well, I, I don't think teams are going to end up wanting to have their quarterback run the ball as much as some of them are right now because of the injury factor. And we've started to see it a little bit now with, I mean, Lamar Jackson's a, a ninja. He is so good at not taking hits and he right. has been on the field the last two Decembers and he's, he's a young guy still, you know, so that, that's one of the worries for me there. And, and and if there's all of a sudden a season where three or four star quarterbacks get hurt, that's just bad for the league because uh, you don't want your superstar players hurt, and you don't want that at the running back position either. But it's one of the big reasons why running back value obviously is is down a little bit. Um, but it's also fun to run the football when you're young. So I don't think that's going to change Everybody that. Everybody wants the ball in their hands. At the, at the youth, high school, even college level. And look, we're we're only talking about a half a dozen guys right now either. It's like, you know, is some kid in high school going to be worried about Josh Jacobs' pocketbook? Or does he just want to carry the football because it's fun? Right. And he's the best kid on his high school team, and he's yeah. the star, and gets the pretty ladies and all that good stuff. Yeah, I, I, I think that that's the – I mean, nothing's going to change – overnight in that manner you know a 5 10 220 or a six foot 225 pound young man's not going to be like i'm going to put on 40 pounds and try to play guard in high school like that's not as much fun as running dudes over and being the man you know what i mean so real quick though this is a spin-off of the conversation but you were talking about quarterback injuries like look how much kyler's times missed you know i mean these smaller dudes in particular you mentioned lamar but i think there will be more at least discussions. And I'm not picking on fields. I'm just pulling him out of the hat because he's had two rocky seasons. He's an awesome runner. He's been but, up a little bit already too. Yeah, right, right, right. But if I draft in two years the best running quarterback in the draft and, and let hope he can throw a little, I mean, maybe not Richardson, and I just recycle a running quarterback every four years as opposed to paying them, my O-line's going to be awesome. The receivers he's throwing to are going to be awesome. 
and my defense should be awesome. Like committee do, quarterbacks, committee quarterbacks right. is the future. Or use them up like you use running backs. Well, especially if you get a good quarterback, you got to pay him fifty million dollars now. You're paying him a, a right. quarter of your salary cap. The the committee cheaper quarterback. That's kind of what the 49ers are doing, not necessarily with running quarterbacks, although Trey Lance can run a little bit. They're they're cheap at quarterback and they're going stars everywhere they can around them to help their quarterback play up. And I don't think it was by I think it's more by necessity than by the plan, but now it's almost become part of the plan. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, if there's a Jalen Hurts prospect, not the player now, second round pick, questionable yeah. accuracy, mm-hmm. why not use a second round pick on that guy every three years? And always have one and never pay them. Interesting. Probably to you'll probably get bad quarterback play too often for probably. that to work. But I would not be surprised if some teams try to go committee quarterback. Mm-hmm. It's the wave, no, of the, here. wave of the future. <laughs> um, really quick. Uh, one question here before we get to the, the Mims trade, Joe Douglas stuff and quarterbacks on shaky ground in 2023. Colt says, much appreciated the advice a month ago or so with the draft academy scouting classes registering for the film study one when I get paid tomorrow. So yeah, he I remember Colt asked us a question about advice getting into scouting and getting into stuff. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to, glad to he some, fell some, fell some folks That's out there awesome. putting it into practice for sure. That's awesome. Congratulations. Um, I'm jealous. I wish I would have had that avenue at that age too. Yes, That's awesome. Exactly. Yep. Um, and he also has a question about the Broncos corners. And I, I don't think we're going to bore our audience with the, the corner two and corner three out in Denver, which is uh Demari Mathis from last year. And then uh rookie Riley third Moss, rounder yeah. uh, who, uh, who's the oh, Moss. Yeah. Uh, Riley Moss. Yeah. Riley Moss. Yeah. From Iowa was their pick this year. I will say every fan base out there going into camp, you should probably slow the roll on expectations for your rookie players, even first rounders. Oh, Half of them are going to be bad. Uh, a lot of them aren't going to play early. So, if you have a question about is rook X rookie going to beat out X veteran, probably not. One little note though, because he went down the scouting, you know, circle and congratulations to you for following through. He brought up Damari Mathis, which I know is not a household name, but he went to Pitt, and that's why I know so much about his his you know their background. He's a sixth but, rounder last year, right? Uh, he was like a fourth, that. I think. Fourth. Fourth. Yeah, he was a good player. I remember liking him. My guy, Croc, who's a DB expert, uh, locked on 49ers co-host. Mm-hmm. He, he liked Amari Mathis a lot last year. But why I was going to bring it up is Pitt plays a ton of press man coverage. And a lot of these guys that come out of Pitt, basically since Revis, have stuck. And there's you don't want a helmet scout, but something like that is a scouting note. Like some of these schools... Narduzzi at Pitt plays a ton of press man coverage. He was a D coordinator at Michigan State. He took it to Pitt. And they don't recruit the best corners in the country, but they come into the league more NFL ready than most colleges. That's a scouting nugget to know. you know, And that's true for a lot of positions at different schools. Absolutely. You tend to see uh, there's DBUs, right? And uh, yeah. um, there's QBUs. So it's, it's not a surprise to see a lot of similar positions come out of a lot of colleges because the way they coach them up. Another nugget again. I was spin it back to Pittsburgh, but we interviewed Patrick Peterson during OTAs, and he picked LSU because they did not have a Dion or a Revis before him. He wanted to be the first one <laughs> and turn LSU into DBU in his footsteps, and he kind of did. You know, he like did. Stingley There's and Math, you know, you know, the Honey DBU Badger. Yeah, yeah. But as a seventeen-year-old, Patrick Peterson was aware enough. His cousin was Brian McFadden, who went to Florida State. He's like, yeah, but they already had their Dion. I want to be the Dion, you know? So he went to LSU. And he did it. And he did it. (laughs) And now everybody looks up to him as like, you know, it's like the godfather of LSU DBs. I mean, it's Um, awesome. All right. Uh, Next, Denzel Mims traded from the New York Jets. What about that Jets build and GM Joe Douglas and a couple of quarterbacks that we're a little bit worried about going into 2023 next? Thanks again, everybody, for making Peacock and Williamson your first listen. Make sure you are subscribed up on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcasts. Okay, so here are the specifics on the Denzel Mim trade that happened this morning, Matt. Um, There's a conditional sixth-round pick. Uh, It's a swap of picks. So basically, the Jets are trading Denzel Mims to the Detroit Lions, uh, along with a seventh round pick. And in return, this is a 2025, so not even the upcoming wow. draft, two drafts from now. So 2025 seventh rounder and Denzel Mibbs 
to the Lions. The Lions are giving up a conditional sixth round pick in that same 2025 draft. So, as and the condition is Mims has to make Detroit's 53 man roster out of camp. So, essentially, it's a free player for the yep, Detroit yep. Lions. If he doesn't make it, if he doesn't make the roster, he just got a free look and you're not going to give up anything. You're swapping seventh round picks. Uh, and if he does make the roster, then you're swapping a sixth for a seventh in 2025. So essentially free. They're, they're dumping Denzel Mibs, and, and the Jets did not expect him with their stacked wide receiver group right now to make that roster, and he'd have trouble getting on the field the first few years of his career anyway. So a couple notes here is I'm almost certain that you can't trade draft picks more than two years out. So a seventh two years from now, is the absolute smallest amount of compensation you're allowed yes. to give another team. <laughs> you know, so that's why that is. So is at least maybe they move up around in two years. But really, it's a giveaway. Here, you take Denzel Mims, take his contract. He was a second-round pick, so it's not a nothing contract. He's been in the league a couple of years. He's the perfect example of the counter to the pit corner conversation, though. Those, like, Corey Coleman, Baylor receivers that run two routes – don't translate well to the NFL. No, they you know what I mean? Line. Yeah, and he's a perfect example. But, boy, the Lions could use somebody with his skill set. I mean, he could be their DJ Chark, maybe. And getting out of New York has to be good for him. But really, my first takeaway when I read that was all this smoke we've heard for six months. Is Corey Davis going to be a Jet? You know, he still is. I mean, we heard forever he's getting cut. Yeah, and he's still he's there. He's still surviving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happen. It better happen soon. And if they're right, right. If they're getting rid of depth behind him, it sure makes it seem like he's going to stay. Mm -hmm. And they're similar types. They're outside the numbers. They're not slot guys for you know. So I, everyone always forgets about Corey Davis. He was a fourth yeah. pick in the draft, and he signed a big contract, and he doesn't stink. How good is GM Joe Douglas in New York? Josh has this question. He says, why is there why is there the impression that Joe Douglas is a good GM? His first two years drafting were absolutely abysmal. And this goes in with the Denzel yeah. Mims thing. 2020 draft, Mekhi Becton can't stay on the field uh, in the first round. Denzel Mims, second rounder, just got traded for a seventh rounder and hadn't done much for them at all. Ashton Davis, where is he? He's definitely not a starting safety, even though he was drafted high in that 2020 class. And Jabari Zaniga, same story there. So right. we're just talking about the first three rounds as well. And then you go into 2021, bust of a quarterback in Zach Wilson. They already had to replace him. And Elijah Vera Tucker, and then Elijah Moore, who's already been traded away as well, a wide receiver. So you have one starting player in those first couple of drafts after drafting seven first rounders and, and multiple picks in the in the top ten, or seven, yeah, seven picks in the first three rounds as well as multiple picks in the top ten. Uh, he goes on to say, yeah, sure, the 2022 draft was great, but should he get should he not should he get credit for not screwing up the drafting a top corner and, and the second ranked wide receiver in that class in the top ten? So. Um, essentially, Josh is trying to say that Joe Douglas is overrated despite how good that roster looks right now in New York. What do you think, Matt? I think he makes a strong case, at least as a drafter. You know, I mean, uh, that 2022 class was awesome, frankly, but I just pulled it up. I mean, they had four picks in the top 36 and three first rounders. You better get something out of it. If it's not a, the, one of the best draft classes in the league, you really screwed up, including the fourth overall pick. We'll see what 2023 brings, but I'm not blown away with the combination of Will McDonald and Joe Tipman. It's fine, but it's I don't know that it's franchise changing. Um, I think he gets a lot of credit, rightfully so. He inherited a really bad deck. I mean, I mean th that team was in trouble whenever he took over. And the Jamal Adams trade was an absolute win. But he didn't do enough with the picks. I mean, like making the trade is step one, but you got to make the picks count. Maybe he's just not a good drafter. You know what I, mean? I mean, I think there's an argument for that. I mean, the Zach Wilson pick is kind of looking Jamarcus Russell as. You know, that Ryan was, Leaf, you know? <laughs> looking back, it's so strange how everybody so quickly was like, well, Zach Wilson's going to be the second pick in this draft after after yeah. Trevor Lawrence. And it was like, oh, wait a second, really? This BYU kid, never saw he's got a right. good arm, and he's got, okay. But like, look at all the look at the arm and athleticism and the, the strengths of all these other guys too. So yeah, that's going to go back. and And the Jets weren't the only one that missed there. Um, some other teams, if they drafted second, would have taken him as well. Um, Makai Becton just had some injury problems, and I'm not sure that story is 100 percent written yet. He's either. you know he, he's been he's not a terrible football player and he's in good shape now. We'll see if he's healthy and can play. Cause I think he might be all right. And you have a starting caliber tackle. Um, so that's not horrific there, 
you know, there's always going to be injuries. And, you know, a lot of these picks are a corn f- coin flip. You look at a, a lot of other teams. But, yeah, that that Mims and Ashton Davis combination in round right, two was really right. bad in 2020. Uh, but he, he was awesome in 2022. And he realized his mistake at quarterback and got that change real quick and brought in a Hall of Famer and, and got that deal done. So, you know, um, a lot of hits and a lot of misses in drafts for a lot of teams. But Joe Douglas, in the end, built a good team. And so I think that's what you look at. You can't look at the individual selections. And if you were amazing one draft and bad the other draft, that still puts you right in that same zone as everybody else where their coin those dra- draft picks for lottery tickets and coin flips a lot of the time. I think that's well said, too. I mean, he inherited a bad team, and now it's better. Right. I mean, are mm-hmm. they going to win the Super Bowl? Maybe. I mean, I'm going to think that's crazy talk, but they're a lot better now than when he inherited them. Of course, of course, you know, he is now tied, you know, big time to Aaron Rodgers. And if that pays off, great. Probably won't have a first round pick next year because of it. And, you know, maybe Rodgers retires in a year and they only win nine games this year. And then all of a sudden all this crumbles and the Sauce Gardeners and Wilsons are hitting free agency and you don't have anything. That's possible too, but this is a fragile league. Question for Michael about shaky quarterbacks heading into 2023. He says, obviously there are the Ritters and Howells, but are the Max and Pickett's locked into 2024? What do you think, Matt? How locked in is Pickett for the Pittsburgh Steelers if he doesn't look really good in 2023? And just do you have one shaky quarterback that you're thinking about that's bounced around in your head? There's more than you would even think because, yeah. I mean, I think in July it's easy to say this guy's safe, this guy's safe. Russell Wilson's going to the Broncos. He's safe. Well, he's not even safe now. You know what I mean? So, oh. yeah. it, it, you know, his car safe. Car looked safe a year ago. A lot of guys are safe just because their contract is where you can't get out of it. But if they could, they would get out of it in a heartbeat, right? Right, uh, right. So, And look, the, the NFL is crazy. You think you know what's going on in the league? you don't even have to wait a year, wait a month and see how different you feel about it. So in October, there's going to be a lot more shaky ground quarterbacks than we even think there are right now. It's a great point. Yeah. I mean, as for Pickett, I would be shocked if his job's in jeopardy after the year. I would not be as shocked if Mac Jones is, is, but fields, I mean, all those guys certainly could be on the hot seat or shaky ground, let alone the old dudes like Stafford or, you know, even Rogers, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there was a report out of new England that, Ownership might prefer to keep Mac over Bill Belichick. <laughs> Bill Belichick's oh. on, on shaky ground, and the ownership really loves Mac Jones and thought he got a raw deal last year. So, uh, I mean, you just never know in this league, man. Um, but, yeah, great point about Justin Fields because I've been pounding the table for Justin Fields. I liked him before the draft. Oh, I love him, yeah. So talented. He could have a breakout. We could be talking about him like we talk about Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts this time next year. Or we could be talking about the Bears drafting – a quarterback in the with the first two picks in the, the draft this year, and Justin Fields right. is going to be on a different football team. Like they got the Panthers pick, and they go get Drake May. Or, you know. Right, right, uh, absolutely. I mean, Jordan Love is is hot. Uh, I mean, he's at a make or break point of his career. I mean, there's no doubt he probably could go half the projected starters. Kyler Murray, maybe even to no fault of his own or some fault of his own. I mean, he, his, right. his, <laughs> oh, his yeah. he's a fragile point in his career. That's another good one, right? Yeah. And depending on where those Cardinals end up drafting, you have to make a big decision with, at quarterback. So, yep, half the league is on shaky ground, and it seems like it happens every year, even though every offseason, every team thinks they, they got a good situation going. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very shaky group. All right. Appreciate all the questions. Apologies to the ones we did not get to. Uh, We love all the questions we get every week at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL on the socials or subscribe up on YouTube. Drop a comment there. Hit the thumbs up, the notification bell. So, you know, when a new podcast arrives and of course you can find us everywhere. You get your podcasts, Matt and I back tomorrow right here. Peacock and Williamson.